Hi, uh, this is Eugene Blanchard and this is part three of the do-it-yourself dyno. Part three is going to talk about the software we're going to use. Uh, we're going to go through the first thing we're going to do is introduce the simple dyno software. That's the uh, free software package that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to look at my setup and how I have it set up in my garage. Uh, we're going to talk about an adapter failure I had. It was a mechanical failure. And then we'll do a, a quick first walk through simple dyno setup. Uh, Simple Dino was developed by a guy named uh, Damo RC was his name, he and uh, he developed it over several years, probably five, six years at least. Uh, amazing package, very uh, in-depth, and uh, he stopped supporting it in November 2017. Um, Basically, I know what he, he's going through is, is basically when you develop software, you develop for your purpose and then all of a sudden it gets to the point where it works and then you don't want to develop anymore. And, and you have, and it takes a lot of time, right? And uh, it takes a lot of time of support, of uh, forum and updating it for packages and stuff and for people who are using it. And if you're getting, if you're doing it for free, it gets to the point where why are you bothering to, to do that? I have to say, uh, uh, again, it's a, a very good piece of software. The, Latest, the last version was a Simple Dino 6.5.1 release package. Uh, it's available online. Uh, on uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link down in the description here. Uh, what he has is a Simple Dino 6.5.1 release package. It has uh, the uh, PDF instructions. It also has the uh, executable in it. It works perfectly fine on Windows 10. I've, I've used it on Windows 10. There are some quirks. Um, it will lock up. If you do some things like, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit later, and that they also he's also made the source code available. So if you're fam familiar with Visual Basic uh, .NET framework, um, and you're a programmer, maybe you can take it uh, uh, a little bit further. Now this is the setup I've got. I got my laptop. I've got the program Simple Dino running on it. I've got it hooked up to uh, my headphone microphone input, which goes to my sensors on my. Uh, Inertia, which is the rotors, and that you have the sensors down here. One sensor to measure this one, and then one over here to measure the motor. I had a problem with the motor, where my adapter that I built over here had come apart. So what I had to do is uh, this screws into this part. So I had to uh, Loctite it in, and I'm just waiting for the Loctite to to dry. Alright, so when you uh, first bring up uh, Simple Dino, it's going to look something like this. Um, there's a couple buttons you should be aware of. There's Hide and Show. So Show, it most likely will come up with this. These are your gauges that you can start with. It's all uh, um, completely configurable. So you can move them around and that. You can resize the gauges. You can change their setting. I have this an RPM1 roller and Normally what it comes up says RPM one roller max. You can right click and then you can just select what you want it to do. I selected RPM two actual RPM. So you can change all of these to these gauges, uh, any one you like. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close the background here. Okay, so now we have a, a better background. I can create a new gauge by clicking on here. It's popped out of my uh, capture window. And under this one, I can change it to RPM wheel, actual RPM, or motor, or channel one frequency, pulse width, duty cycle speed, all sorts of different things that you can change it to. Um, one of them I, I'm going to try, I haven't got it to y yet, is you can say wheel torque, you can say actual in uh, pound feet, right? So now it's going to measure that. Uh, so you have a gauge that this. Default gauge is RPM 1 roller, RPM, RPM 1 roller, RPM 2, I changed it. And then you have RPM 1 roller, RPM, and time, so give it a clear. Now, one of the things, uh, if you click on close, it's going to close the setting. So typically what you want to do is once you have a setting, you want to save it. right? Uh, if you close it, what you're going to see is that you're going to have to load your setting. So you go to load, and what happens is that uh, Simple Dino sets a setting under C drive in the root directory, Simple Dino, and it's going to have a default view. Bring up the default view, and that's going to show the ones here. Uh, what I like to do is keep the default view set, and I, I can do a save as, and I've saved it as a uh, Grad 1, right? 
so you can give it a name here Let's say here's my test one setting right so now you always have a setting that you can go to so this kind of confused me at first as I hit close and I'm going to oh where's what's going to happen or I hit hide and everything's disappeared and show so these uh, these buttons are are very important you can set labels and gauges and y versus time I guess this is a graph y versus time a label are these ones so these are labels these are gauges this is a graph when you first I'm going to just close the, uh, hide these I'll go to dyno dyno is the, the setting where you actually set up your um, parameters for your dyno so there's non-critical parameters everything's in grams uh, this was originally made for RC cars it'll work perfectly fine with full-size vehicles and that so you can say your vehicle mass um, in my case I'm going to say it's a thousand pounds which is 454,000 grams uh, frontal area no clue I'll leave it at that drag coefficient no clue gear ratio uh, oh something interesting is that when you click on each of these items it'll change the menu here right so say what's the height the front to width right so how do you calculate the frontal area drag coefficient right uh, gear ratio on my motor I have a 10 tooth gear on my rotor I have a 30 tooth gear that gives me a 3 to 1 ratio so you put 3 in here and the wheel diameter and this is more for if you were setting up um, on a car this would your, be your differential gear this would be your d diameter of the rear tire right these are non-critical it'll work perfectly fine without it critical parameters are your roller diameter so my roller is 11 inches which is 280 millimeters my roller wall thickness from here to here is 2.8 inches which is 71 millimeters and my mass I have two um, disc brake rotors and they're 14.1 pounds each which is 28.2 pounds which work out to 128 uh, 12,800 grams axle diameter uh, let's go over there. so this is the weight here's our uh, axle diameter was uh, uh, one inch or 25.4 millimeters I'm guessing that it's about uh, 454 grams and then you can have your end cap if there's an end cap on it you can have your end extra any extra diameters and extra wall thickness any extra mass that you've put on it and then it comes up how many signals do you have or in, or in my case how many magnets do you have on your roller I have two and then it asks an RPM 2 which is normally your motor so my 3 to 1 gear ratio on my motor I have another 2 so I put 2 here and this will calculate out your actual dyno uh, moment of inertia and what happens is you're looking for a percent of target dyno motion of inertia so what it's doing is saying if you're going to have a, a vehicle mass of 454,000 grams then you're only running about 1.8 percent of the target right so my roller mass here I imagine if I took these two numbers and did some magic on it, it would come up with this number here so again this is for non-critical I just put in uh, values in there all right so now we've got our dyno set up what we want to do is we want to take a look at here so I'm using audio in I'm using the mic inputs uh, there's two channels uh, what I suggest is you start with one channel right just one channel to start with and you hit start now this is going to be interesting I'm not sure what's going to happen because my screen capture program is hooked up to my mic and uh, yeah okay so it's picking up my mic so what happens is a red channel is, is rpm1 which is a uh, uh, the left channel of the mic and you're going to have a value over here this green line this is called the threshold normally the threshold is down here right and what you see is my voice that's going to be uh, noise right so uh, when I run my uh, dyno I get really nice big spikes that are coming up like this and I get a lot of noise so what you want to do is make sure that your uh, threshold is above it so what you do is you um, left click for this channel so now that means that your dyno symbol 
has to signal has to be above this to get a good signal. Uh, something that's interesting with this is that um, if I swing over on this side, then we see that we have a very small window that's measuring our dyno. If I swing over top of it, then it becomes active. If I want it to stay on top, see how my cursor changed to a hand symbol? If I, uh, I think it's right click, yeah. So I actually was left click. I left clicked on it and now this is going to stay up here. So now I can check and I can spin my dyno right now. I should be able to see what my signal is and get a check. If I wanted to go look at the regular program, I can just click here and now here. So one of the tricks is click on here. If you hover over it, it's open. Uh, if you want to stay open, uh, left click, it'll stay open. And then if you want to close, you have to go all the way to the left and now it's back. You have some options here to say what is your sampling rate. It's uh, 11,000 hertz. Uh, you have a choice of 22,000, 44,000 hertz. I tried 44,000, didn't work. If you hit start, now when we hit start, what we'll see is that it'll actually start mem uh, uh, measuring. So I'll hit start, I'll tap on my mic. Uh, I'll see if I can get a signal that'll hit our threshold. So it's starting to measure. It's getting some crazy RPM values and stuff like that. Uh, basically just because I'm tapping on it. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is the next one, we'll actually start doing our, our uh, actual testing of it, uh, connecting up to a dyno, and uh, we'll get some signals and see how that works.